United Against Cancer. Yes. a lot of work and it's commendable for a country that you know had so little when you started in the field and now you can have all yes. this collaboration yes yes so do you think that there are more policies that you would like to see in place uh you know in your own understanding either globally that you can bring into Pakistan to enable you function better as an oncologist from the government? You know, Some one of the most important things is one of the most important things is that you have to look inside inside and see what is happening. The governments are very unstable in low middle income countries. As a result of which uh, what you find is that you've asked them for something and by the time you get it or not get it, it's uh, the government has changed. Now, should it be done on an individual level? Should it be done on an individual level or should it be done at the government level? I'm not sure. Uh, you know, like the cancer control program is written it is there, but the impl impl uh, implementation of that program is very minimal as far as I'm concerned and as far as people are concerned. Now, the basic concept for treating oncology should be early detection and to prevent infections which cause cancer, even air pollution, which we were part of. And if you, the more I read about air pollution, the more I realized that for, how we are living in such a polluted environment. I'm surprised that we're all healthy for now. Absolutely. <laughs> so basically, I think it will have to be done at an individual and societal level. But at the government level, if I say that everything should be done by the government, I'm not sure it will be done. Yeah. So it has yeah. to be our own approaches and our society's approaches, uh, how things can be improved. That is my feeling. I can be wrong. I'm not sure about Nigeria, what is happening there, but mm. unstable political environment is the worst thing that yeah. can happen to any country. Definitely the government has a role to play, as indeed the private sector, as well as um, civil society in different aspects. So I think that a collaboration, as we have, we always hamper on, and uh, realizing our limitations and seeking for partnerships that will help us to improve the uh, landscape is what we need. We are seeing a lot of uh, inputs and a lot of innovation now. And maybe I want to hear a little bit about that, what the landscape is when we talk about uh, digital technology and artificial intelligence in Pakistan and, and how in your opinion, as a seasoned oncologist, how do you think the future of uh, the use of digital technology, particularly artificial intelligence, can help us to revolutionize uh, the cancer outcomes in your country, Pakistan? Uh, uh, artificial in intelligence is, in, it's nascent, is very nascent here in Pakistan. Research is being done and it is more in the internal medicine area rather than medical oncology. Having said that, uh, in the uh, in the uh, next month when we have our annual meeting, the plenary session is on artificial intelligence in cancer. Uh, we were, I'm not sure if the data which is being collected is all from Western Europe and United States. Will it be applicable to yeah, yeah? Will it be applicable to us or not? Or, and how do we change it for our environment? So next month, I'm looking forward to the plenary sessions and seeing what is going to happen. Now, uh, as far as histopathology or radiology is concerned, I'm sure that will help a lot. Uh, I was yes. reading an article early this morning about cancer patients' diet being controlled, answered by artificial intelligence. And more than 80% of the patients were satisfied with the answers they got. 
So, uh, but like it, it, the diet would be different for us, for you will be different. So yes. we'll have to yes. have to see how we can uh, look at that. So if it comes, I'm sure it'll be very good. But yes. can we can we <coughs> when can we implement it in our part of the world? I'm not sure. Yes, yes. I think you are absolutely spot on. Uh, the data for us in Africa, only two percent of the global pool of uh, that is used to build the models comes from Africa, and I'm sure that it will be similar. However, that puts us under yeah. pressure uh, to contribute our own data and look for ways in which we can gather and pull together the data that we have. I'm sure that you have thousands and millions of breast scans and mammograms and so on across all sectors of human beings in your country. And it's just to gather the data and build the models with it. So well done for focusing on that and starting the journey and having it as a plenary session. I'm sure that you will be uh, a lot of ideas will come out of that. Yeah, it's, I hope so. And, and, yeah. and that they are practical and applicable to our part of the yeah. world. You know, for yeah. countries like us, where our uh, national registries, cancer registries are very uh, political and fragmented. Uh, and then you just right. have the initial data. You don't have the five-year outcome or survival data. You don't oh, have yeah, things in details. I mean, how can artificial, maybe it can, I'm not sure, but something will have to come out gradually. I think, yes, it will come out, especially with the younger ones. They are yeah, really yeah. keen to it and they're using it a lot more. Um, so one of my, my second to the final question would be, as a long-standing UICC member, what more would you like to see from the organization, the UICC? Is there anything more that you'd like to see the organization? You know, as the UICC I know you mentioned the fees. The fees yeah. are a problem, or a lot of members from LMICs talk about that, but we also have um, you know, different fee categories, of course. But unfortunately, yeah. this is reality. Uh, so as, what more would you like to see? If you want to talk about the fees as well, that's fine. No, no, I don't want to talk about the fee. They have to work. They have a structure. I mean, I'm not complaining about the fee. It is just that it's expensive for us. It's not that uh, I'm complaining and I don't want to complain because they're doing a lot of work and it's the money coming from the fees and other donations that makes it alive. So Absolutely. I, no, mm -hmm. nothing good comes from being free. And you don't value that. Uh, that I mean, UICC is doing a marvelous job, and I hope it continues to do it. Like these are common problems. Like just the, the other day when we met, I started reading up on air pollution and cancer, and I realized that I know next to nothing. And you know <laughs> how important it is for us, especially in this part of the world. To fight for it because yes. the U.S. and uh, and, uh, and um, uh, Europe don't uh, they already have control systems there. Like when you go to Geneva, you feel that you're in a different world altogether. It's such a rarefied <laughs> atmosphere. The air is so clean, you think there's something wrong with the air <laughs> because we are used to breathing polluted air. <laughs> That's area. Yes, yeah. and there have so, been a lot of reviews by the organization on air pollution. Yeah, there are yeah. some papers. And, and they are doing a lot of other work also. And I think that what UICC is doing, it is contributing to global development of various countries. And every country which needs something goes to UICC and gets it part, its part. Like, I mean, whatever you need, you get it something or the other is happening, either yeah. WHO or UICC. So mm -hmm. I think it's a very good development. I think I'm very happy that we are a member of UICC and we can see so much things which we normally wouldn't focus on or find out. Yes, yes. Even for the ability to mobilize and bring together members from uh, yeah. different parts of the world, you and I Just like today, from... just like today. Yes. Yes, yeah, I mean, that, that is the beauty right. of having an international yeah, and learning what is happening. And probably, 
then inviting you guys to things which you would be interested in, inviting me to things I yes. would ask to be interested in. So I think yes. it's wonderful. And I An think UICS is a great platform for it. I mean, we wouldn't be able to do it alone. Okay, that's fantastic to hear. Thank you for that. And the last one is any final thoughts, uh, famous quotes, anything you want to round up with? It's open. I'm, I don't have a famous quote. I'm just a very ordinary <laughs> physician. I'm just saying that uh, I'm, I'm happy with what has been achieved. And uh, for women, I feel that Yes, move forward, but there are a lot of sacrifices which we give along the way. Sacrifices from our families, from our friends, from us also. You don't have time to think about yourself. I'm not sure about you, but I don't you have time to think. Very, very <laughs> hardly, hardly. So, uh, uh, but I have, I, I have, I've been happy with what I've done, and I'm very satisfied with what I've achieved. And I pray to God every day and I say, thank you, Allah, for what you have Yes, uh, fantastic. That's great. And you did, indeed, you do have a lot to be proud of. And I'm sure that you're mentoring a lot of younger people. And yeah, there are a lot of younger applicants who are mentoring. And I'm happy because they're going places and doing well. They're going places as well. Well, thank yeah. you so much. You're so welcome. I just need to say united against cancer. So that when we do the interviews, we're going to put together everybody. So just that sentence, united against cancer. Yes. United against cancer. Yes. Yes. That's a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Ziba. Thank you. Said you. you Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.